Hey everyone, Flying Dutchie here and welcome back to part 3 in our Heart of Iron 4 tutorial for complete beginners. In the previous episodes we have talked about all these buttons over here. We have talked about what all, is it, uh, what all these things are and your loss. Uh, the focus and we went over all the pop-ups over here. Uh, we take a quick look at the uh, Army, Navy and Air. Uh, we will get an explanation of Army, Navy and Air now in the next videos. And that is where we are going to uh, start this episode. We are going to talk about the army. And uh, yeah, you should use your army, uh, your your divisions in an army. That's how I should uh, say it actually. And how to do this? How are we going to do this? Are you going to select them with a box and just put them on the front like this? No. Press H. You will hold their orders. H on your keyboard. It's a very uh, nice uh, shortcut. No, you have to put them in an army. So if I click on this, you can see the last pop-up here is saying we have unassigned divisions. We have some divisions in the map that have not that are not in a command group. They are not in an army yet. And you want all your divisions always in a command group. So if I click this once, we open uh, one infantry division as you can see. It opens up the infantry division here on this uh, tile here. Uh, this is an infantry division, 9 infantry and 2 support units. Uh, and when we click again, we go to the next one. And again, and again, and again. It just opens up everything the whole time. So what I would like to do is shift click on the unassigned divisions. And it opens up all the divisions that we have that are not assigned to any uh, group. Which means all our units at the start of the game. And then you want to click on uh, this new army button over here. So an army is necessary in order to create battle plans, making it possible to organize movements or large number of units in multiple steps. And there we go. The pop-up the pop is gone now, and we have all our 30 units now listed in this army. And here we can see instantly that uh, we have four normal infantry divisions here, then we have three tanks, we have a motorized uh, one, we have one cavalry division, and we have a mountaineer, a Gebirgsbrigade division. Now we went over the divisions, uh, they are pretty small, the tanks, and the infantry is only having infantry and no artillery yet. Uh, what I always like to do is uh, put my tanks in a different group, and I will just select one, and then hold the uh, shift button, and then click all three of them. So now all my three uh, tanks, who are in Berlin, are now selected, and I'm going to click on another new army. You can see that we have 27 in this one, and now 3 are in this one over here. Uh, I'm going to click again, because uh, what I also want to do is get rid of my motorized division. Uh, when you click on this symbol, you can see their stats. So uh, this is a... Uh, yeah, it's uh, still very defensive, but it has a little bit more breakthrough compared to our normal infantry units, because it's making use of trucks. Uh, 9 trucks. And it's also using some other support equipment over here. Um, I don't like to have my trucks as a unit in the field. So what I would like to do is uh, change this one to a normal infantry one. And how do you do this? Well, you click on the ones you want to change. So for example, the motorized. I'm going to click the change division template. So I want this to become or an infantry or a panzer division. Now panzer divisions are built very, very slowly. So I will click on the infantry division here, and then you get a pop-up. You, are you sure you want to change this to uh, this division to the infantry division? And then you can see the changes. I click OK, and now this will become um, a normal infantry division. And I guess it's already having everything to be uh, at 100% strength. So that one is now out of the list. And the same accounts for my cavalry actually. Uh, my cavalry division is very very weak. As you can see, my defense is not 200, but 100. No attack here. Um, it's very small. It's completely useless, really. Um, at least for this task. And I'm going to change this one also. To infantry. There we go. And now when I go back to my recruit and deploy button. Uh, you can now see two delete template options here. And that's because we have no more units on the map with this template. So um, what you could do is remove this one. I will not remove this template because maybe we can use it later for something else. 
Um, and the same goes for the cavalry uh, template. Uh, cavalry is actually really good at... Uh, where is it? Suppression. And you want suppression if you want to conquer uh, land from your neighbors. And you conquer land from Poland, for example. The people in Poland are going to rise up. They are going to rebel. And you want to have your unit on suppression. Uh, and take care of it. And cavalry is really good at this. Better than infantry. You can see that the suppression for one cavalry is two. You can see it almost in the middle of this little tip here. And if I would add a normal infantry. You can see that the suppression is 1.5. So uh, cavalry is a little bit better. And that means that you need less cavalry to get the same effect of uh, putting down the, uh, the, uh, the uprising. So that is why I most likely am going to use the cavalry for. Now I will reset this quickly because I don't want to change this. And we cannot change it because you need army experience to change your templates. And at the moment we don't get any. Because we are not training. We don't have an, uh, uh, how is this thing called? A chief of army giving us experience. So that will be later in the game. And we're going to change our templates. Okay, that is all done. Now let's go back to this army over here, right? We still have a, uh, a mountaineer. I'm also going to put that one out in another army. And now we have 26 infantry uh, units. And let's add a commander. So you always want to have a commander. Because it gives bonuses to the army group. Let's click over here. And this will open up uh, the available commanders for our army. And you can see as Germany, we have a lot of commanders. There's also some field marshals. I will go over this when uh, we are a bit further. We have three field marshals, but right now we want to assign a commander. Now, I can give you a tip already. What you really want to do is get a, a commander with the infantry. Uh, trait because they gain experience uh, double uh, uh, I guess uh, double the speed so you can level up your generals uh, quicker if they have an infantry uh, trait if you are putting them on, on on infantry you want to see an infantry officer that is pretty handy uh, you don't have to um, then you want to uh, sort them on attack or defense over here for example, if I click on my attack, we have uh, Fedor von Bock, who is having the highest attack skill of all our generals. But then when we take a look at the other traits, uh, yeah, we get plus one attack, but the division recovery rate is a little bit uh, slower. So, meh, it's it's not, not the best trait, not, does not really do anything. We also have Cautious, the planning speed goes down, uh, but he will not get wounded that quickly in combat. So, this is a very cautious and disciplined general. It can be good when you want to attack, for example. Now, we also have uh, three armors, right? Let's go to our armored uh, units here, the Panzer Divisions, who are at the moment consisting of four light tanks and two trucks. We also have a motorized recon. Recon gives uh, a bonus in combat, I think, when uh, you have a higher re reconnaissance than your enemy. Uh, and it also gives some bonuses to uh, your movement in a certain amount of uh, terrain. Now it also has an engineer and a little bit of artillery to, to increase the soft attack of this template. Uh, but let's take a look at the generals for uh, tanks. There are a couple of traits that you can use. Uh, we have one here, armor officer. The panzer leader experience factor plus 100%. So, uh, you, you preferably want someone with this trait. Because then your, your general will uh, level up quicker. Uh, so let's take a look at armor over here. And these are all our armor officers. We have a lot of them. And let's just pick someone that is having a decent amount of stats over here. You are reckless. So you will get wounded quicker. Uh... Army reassignment duration, not that big of a deal, well we have the armor officer so we get more experience quicker. We have a war hero and we have trickster, a bit more reconnaissance. We, you, we can get more trades right now but you need command power for this so I don't think we can uh, do this right now so let's not take a look at it yet. What do you have? Promotion costs, 
You're a Cassius, that's just like Fedor von Bock. You have the armor officer. Yes, Trickster, a bit more reconnaissant, better at uh, attacking rivers and forts, okay. And what has Heinz Guderian over here? Reconnaissance. Oh, he's having another Panzer trade. Panzer leader. Uh, the speed goes up for armor and we get 16% higher armor division attack. Wow. 16%. That is more than his whole skill. Uh, a level 4 skill gives 10%. This one gives 16% by this trade. So, Heinz Guderian, I think, is the best uh, armored officer at the start of the game. Take a look at the other ones here. Just some bonuses here. Leader experience is not good. And then the stats goes down and their level. Uh, Heinz Guderian is the best one for the armored forces, I think. So we are going to put this guy in. Then here you can see his traits. You can see his uh, skill in supply. So he uses a little bit of supply. Um, his planning or tactics. How is this uh, skill called? I don't even know what the name is of that skill. I guess it's just planning. Sp it's it's planning or something. But that's really good because with a skill five, we're gonna get a ten percent boost to planning, and I will show that to you guys what that is when we go to war. Uh, ten percent defense from four skill here and seven point five percent attack. Yeah, Heinz Guderian is one of the best ones over here. So we're gonna put him. In this army, and you can immediately see that uh, a commander can only uh, is only capable of uh, uh, leading 24 uh, divisions. If you go over, you will get some penalties. So we have 26 infantry over here. Um, that is too much for one commander. So let's go once again to our infantry commanders over here, and let's pick one with a, I guess, with a good attack and defense uh, skill. Uh, we have Wilhelm Ritter von Leib. Uh, but this one gets less experience because he's an old guard. I'm not a fan of those. Then we have Erwin von Witzleben. He's having no penalties, so maybe we pick that one. But let's see if we have something better over here. Because you are an engineer. Which would actually be really good. Hmm. And if I remove everything... We could use Fedor von Bock. He is having a huge attack skill. What about Erwin Rommel? Oh yeah, he's an armor guy. We do have a cavalry officer. So when you make uh, armies that are only consisting about cavalry, you want to put Maximilian von Weix on it. You are the old guard. Good student. Is more of a good for paratroopers with your non-combat out of supply. Maybe we'll show it off in this tutorial, but not sure. I guess we're going with Erwin over here. So, you can see we get penalties. 8.3%. So what I will do is split this uh, division in two. You can do that by this button, or S on your keyboard. And then click the army thing again. And now he is having 13. And now this 13 is also going to get another infantry commander. Uh, not the old guard, so I guess Johannes Blaskovic or, or, or Friedrich Schultz over here. I get Friedrich Schultz in. There we go. And then we have a mountaineer left. Do we have a trade that is good for mountains? Mountaineers, no. Hill. No, I don't think we have any commander that is giving a bonus to, uh, to your... Uh, mountaineers, so bonus to in attacking hills or something. I don't think we have it. We do have the engineer trade, we have a winter specialist. No, I don't think we have any good trades for fighting in the mountains. No, we don't. So I guess I'm gonna just get Fedor von Bock because he is uh, very good. And for now, he will take care of that uh, one Gebirgs Brigade, just six uh, mountaineers. Which is the same as infantry, but they get bonuses for hills, and they are, I guess, a bit more expensive. But I'm not sure about that, actually. Let's see, you have 22 defense and 6 soft attack, and then the bonuses for hills and mountains. So 22, 6, and 70 production cost. Can I shift-click on this? Yes, I can. So 
So you are this. 22, 6, 70. 22, 6. And this one is only costing 50 to produce. So this is 70. And this one is 50. So these ones are, are uh, built quicker. And you only have a limit of how many uh, special units you can make. So you cannot do anything uh, over the limit. Uh, if I want to make more mountaineers right now, I can train. And uh, you can see over here, I think this is our uh, our cap, I think, to... Uh, yeah. We can only have 24 uh, battalions of Kabirx Brigada. So we can make three more, and then we cannot make more of these. So these will have a bonus again in fighting in the hills. It would be good for uh, fighting in Switzerland and the Alps, for example. But we're not going to make those right now. Okay. Now, they are now having an army. Uh, what are we going to do now, Dutchie? Because they still have a red thing. Yeah, the division belongs to an army, but it has no orders assigned. You can draw defensive offensive lines and assign units to them. Okay. Well, most likely our first target is going to be Poland. So what I'm going to do here is send these 13 infantry to the border with Poland and tell them to prepare for something. Now, when you click on an army, you get this whole screen over here. Uh, don't look at these ones. We will use these ones when we are in battle. Uh, this one is, is to train your army. Uh, you can see that most of our armies are trained to level 3, a regular. Uh, you cannot train them over the level of regular. And they get a 25% modifier in combat. Now since this one is not having the fully trained modifier, uh, this one is only at 0%. So we could still train this one uh, division, and we will eventually. Uh, but training costs also equipment, so you don't want to do that the whole time. Uh, only when you are going to war, for example. It's very nice to have your divisions on level 3, because then they will be better in combat. Uh, and you can do it with this button. You also gain army experience when you train your divisions. Uh, that is this one. And then you can use that experience to... Uh, yeah, change your templates and get uh, get your uh, doctrines unlocked, for example. This one costs 100 right now. It will be 30 later on, thanks to our focus tree. But this is how you can train your units. And if you want to train all your units, you just click. And click to stop. But if you shift click, then you will exercise with everyone that is not already trained. So then only this one will train. And the ones that are level 3 will not train. That's also a, uh, a, a nice thing to do. Now this is how uh, how quickly you advance. You can be aggressive, balanced and careful. Um, I actually never used this one. Division will only relocate from medium distances. Okay. Okay, I never used the ch these things, so it's not really doing anything. It, it, it's just saying that armies cannot move from one side to another and only stay close, for example. Uh, then the naval invasion order. We're not going to do any naval invasions. If you want to do naval invasions, you have to go from your port and then land, for example, in Great Britain. Then you need a strong fleet to be able to do that, etc. We are going to make a front line. Now, you can see that... Uh, these things are getting highlighted. We can make a multiple front lines with countries. It's going per country. So at the moment we can make one, two, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Lithuania. We could make front lines with all these countries. Now since Poland will be my first target, we are going to left click here. And now the 13 troops over here are going to move to the border with Poland. Uh, we also have 13 infantry over here. I'm going to put these ones to this border with Poland. Uh, by three tanks, I am going to put them to the Netherlands so that they are a bit of out of the way. And my mountaineer, I'm going to put at the border with uh, Czechoslovakia. Now, when I unpause the video, and I will do this with the space bar, you can see that our armies are going to move to the fronts. Remember, every hour is one tick in the game. Then something happens. Uh, and they are all going to, uh, yeah, to the front line. And 
when they do this, uh, they are going to build up uh, a defensive bonus. And I'm going to show that to you very soon when they are uh, at the border. Now we do have a new pop-up over here. Let's see what is this. Oh yeah, the uh, pop-up for, pop for the transport planes that I don't want to make. So I'm going to right-click that away. Now I'm going to press the plus button and go to speed 2. So it goes a little bit quicker. Uh, you can see that the railway icon that is uh, strategically deploying uh, you can uh, move your troops around very fast by your rail network I guess um, but they get a 90% penalty so when you do this their organization will uh, go to 10% which they are doing right now so all our units are strategically deploying right now uh, and they lose all their organization. This is the morale bar of your armies. Um, if you run out of organization, you lose the battle. So a 53 organization is actually not too bad at the moment. Now, let's just uh, let the game run and let our armies run towards uh, the borders over here. And let's see how it's going to look like it. So we can see that our tanks are there already. They have more speed. Our tanks have a speed of 10. And that is because the slowest unit in the division is the light tank with 10 kilometers per hour. If we would put tanks with a infantry unit, they will only go with four, I think. I think the speed of infantry is only four. Yeah, it's 30 now because of strategic deployment. Yeah, so no, normally they only go 4 kilometers per hour. So if you want to make tank divisions and you want to have them a bit uh, more speed, then you should never put infantry with tanks, but maybe motorized and later on mechanized infantry. Because then you can keep the speed high for these units. Now, let's uh, keep playing. You can see that these ones need to go on a boat. Uh, they go from this port and they are going to land in the port in Königsberg. Because we don't, we don't control Danzig. So they have to go all over the sea over here. And then land over here. You can see that our convoys are going down. Because we are using 54 to transport troops. Now they are going to land over here. And they are going to make a front line with Poland. So we can see that we have 13 divisions going over here. How many provinces do we have with Poland? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have at least one division on the front here, and in some provinces we will have two of them. But how is that with this front? We have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I guess this one as well, seventeen. So the thirteen troops are not enough to put one division on the whole front so we really want to make more units because if we don't have a unit here and we will be at war of Poland they are going to take this province with no battle so you want to have a con concentrated line to watch your enemies now I will talk about uh, what is going to happen right now so the tanks are now in place in the Netherlands right we, we still have a uh, Two more provinces we could put a tank. We cannot put any units here yet until we have done uh, uh, the Rhineland focus. How is it called again? Yeah, the Rhineland focus. To uh, ignore the penalties that, that Germany gets from the last world war. And station troops over here. So this tank is now in position. And you can see over here that when a unit is standing still, it is building up entrenchment. Now, tanks do not have a big entrenchment. Um, it gives a defensive combat bonus, as you can see. The maximum it, the, a tank can get right now for us is 14%. So, we can get a 14% boost to defense. Now, you don't want to defend with your tank, so... We want this on our infantry units, really. Um, and now I'm going to show you guys what is also going to happen. Because we already made a front line, right? With this army. This, these three tanks are at the border with the Netherlands, but they have no order. They are not assigned to attack the Netherlands at the moment. Uh, you can assign an offensive line. And when you click this, you can see that the nation is getting striped where you have the front line with. 
and then uh, you can make an attacking line. For example, I will tell the tanks to go towards over here, so that they will crush the Netherlands, for example. So right click and drag to draw the offensive line on this territory. Okay, so I press the right mouse button and I hold it. And then I tell the game that I will want to take all these provinces like this. Now you can see that it goes from yellow to green. Uh, that is because I have three divisions taking three provinces at the moment. If I add a fourth one, it will go to yellow. But that doesn't matter. Uh, it still wants to assign this order. And now this army is told to go towards the Netherlands and attack. And you can see this play button over here, right? Uh, when you are at war of the country, you can click this button and it will execute your orders. Um, now you can see the, the plan value. The Netherlands is an inferior, inferior enemy. They are very weak uh, units and we are having tanks against their infantry, which is very, very effective. And it's all flatland, so tanks will be very, very good over here in the northeast of uh, the Netherlands. Now when I unpause, we have another bar filling up over here, and that is your plan preparation attack bonus. And since we are using, I think, Heinz? Is it your trade? I'm not sure, but we, I think we have a bonus for the 40%. Oh yeah, we can see it over here. So yeah, Heinz Guderian is adding 10% to the planned preparation attack bonus. We get 4% each day, so 24 hours we will get 4%. To a maximum of 40%, so we get a 40% attack bonus if we uh, draw a plan and then, wait a, and then wait a couple of days. If we wait 10 days, we will get a maximum of 40% planning bonus. And then we have a bonus to our attacks. So that is what I like to get before I attack anyone. Build up the plan preparation over here. Now you can see in the next day that the bar will go up a little bit more. Including the entrenchment. Yeah, the entrenchment is now at 10% and this one is now at 8%. So we're going to give orders to all our armies over here. So our infantry here. Uh, the red one. I'm going to tell you guys that you can go and take all of Poland. There we go. And the 13 over here that are going to East Prussia. You guys can take all of Poland when you are going to war with them. And I guess the Mountaineer we will give an order as well. Here. And that will stay on the map and then you can see the orders you have drawn for your armies. Now. We are now playing the game. I think it's a good idea to uh, start playing right now. Uh, we have talked about most of the armies over here. We have no tool uh, pop-ups over here. We are making our units. You can see that some of the equipment that we are making from our factories is ad getting added to our newer recruits, including our tanks over here. And yeah, they get a bit of training. And then when they are fully trained, we can put them in the field. You can put them in the field earlier with this button. But you need to at least train them 20%. Then you could put them in the field, but I would just recommend waiting until they are fully trained. If you're not in a hurry at least. Okay, that is all done. Now, there is another plus here. What is that, Dutchie? Well, with these armies, you can make an army group. If I select all the armies with shift click, so shift, 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 shift. I have all my four armies now selected. Now when I click on this thing, and you can see it over here as well, we now have these four armies in an army group. And you can assign a field marshal to your army group. Now I'm a big fan of uh, splitting my infantry and my, uh, and my, uh, my tanks in different army groups. So that is what I'm going to do here. Um, so first I will just add one for all my infantry. Is there anyone that gives good bonuses for infantry? Well, you are a panzer leader, so maybe I should get Gunther von Kluge uh, on our tanks. So then we have Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt. You get 30% more entrenchment. Now that is really helpful for defending, right? 
And when we attack a city, urban tile, we will get some bonuses. The downside is... Oh, and we get an extra entrenchment boost of plus one. But you are an old guard. But I guess we have to, t have to take this one. Uh, what is Walter Modell over here? Oh, you also give 30% entrenchment. Uh, you're cautious, that is alright for us. Uh, okay, so you are actually also very good. Uh, you are having a higher defense skill, but they are both they are both fine actually. I'm gonna put in the Field Marshal Gerd from Runestead over here. Now, this guy is also having all these stats. And I think that uh, it works as follows. This army with this general is getting the 100% bonuses of his skills. And then additive will be 50% of these skills. So I'm actually curious if the defense doctrine from Gerd from Runestead is giving 15% entrenchment. Let's take a look at this. Because they are standing still already. Uh, let's see, do we get entrenchment? This unit is entrenched. It receives a 17% defense combat bonus. It will increase by 2%. We have a maximum of 5. Gerd gives plus 1. That, yeah, no, Gerd from Runestead are... Um, our Field Marshal gives 30%. Okay. That is pretty nice, actually. So we get the full bonus from our Field Marshal. Okay, I didn't know that. That is very good to know. And you can see that they are fully entrenched now, since they are standing still for a while. And this would be very hard to beat. They also have their plan, plan prep preparation bonus ready. Uh, Erwin is giving a 4% boost. And Gerd von Runset, our Field Marshal, is giving another 6%. So, uh... That is, yeah, how, we, how it's going to work. Uh, now, you can see that we're getting a bit more command power, because we are playing the game. Uh, what you also can do is make more theaters, I think. Yes. Uh, you can use these theaters and just create a new template. And you can make as many as you want. Now, what you can do, for example, is east, west, south and north. And make a theater like this, or Poland and France, and make a new theater for France, for example. That is also something you can do. What I like to do is just make an infantry theater. Just rename it infantry. With these four armies and these four generals. And then click on the tanks here. Click on the new theater. And just call these uh, tanks, for example. And you can see here that this one is not having this symbol. So uh, these tanks do not have a field marshal yet. Now we saw someone that has the armor officer. So I'm going to get Gunther von Kluge over here. And hopefully the uh, they will level up quicker. Because they have this field marshal together with this commander. Right? But this is how I like to uh, use my uh, theaters. Sometimes I also use east-west. Depends on which country I play. And uh, this way we are using uh, two field marshals with uh, specialized skills. This is the Panzer. They are both good at Panzers. And these three with Gerd are good for defense with our infantry. So that is how I want to, uh, to use all of that. Um, is there anything else I want to show before we are going to go to the next episode? Let's see. Here you can see all the battles that are happening, I think, when you are at war. When you click on the settings, you can uh, increase the, the uh, priority where your goods should go. For example, uh, we are getting invaded by the United Kingdom and, uh, and America. D-Day happens, and they are going to invade France to uh, free everyone, right? And I'm fighting in the Soviet Union. And I have a template for the Soviet Union, and I have a template for my home defense over here. Or even an army going to fight against the invasion. Then I can switch my, my priority from the new equipment from the factories from Russia towards uh, the invasion over here. That is how you could use these uh, 
reinforcement priorities. I'm not really using it. Um, but maybe you want to focus on units that are really good. Or that needs the new equipment first. And then you can use theaters for that as well. Now I think we have talked about the army things that I wanted to do. Uh, let's see, we have talked about all of this. Uh, there is supplies that we did not talk about yet. We will do that later. This is also uh, about the supplies. You can select all the units with this button. You can also just click over here. Uh, we have talked about strategic deployment. You only want to use, uh, click this button when you want to quickly move your troops around. We have selected this one. This is the weight. Does not really matter that much. You can undesign all these selected units from this army. I almost never use that button. So, I think we've talked about most of the things that are in the screen over here. Uh, I'm not going to talk to about these things. We will do it in the next episode when we are going to talk about Navy and Air Force. Yeah, I think, I think I'm ready for now with how, uh, how armies are set up and how they work. So you want to make army groups, put a commander on it and a field marshal that is governing these three army groups to get all the bonuses. And uh, yeah, make sure that you get a good pla uh, plan preparation uh, that gives a massive bonus at the start of the battle. And when you are defending, you want entrenchment. Now, if you want entrenchment, uh, what you really want is a um, is an engineering company. Because an engineering company gives more entrenchment. And when you have more entrenchment, you get a bigger defense boost. So engineering companies are very, very good for defense. When you're making an infantry uh, division that needs to defend, you almost want to, always want to click uh, the engineers on it over here. Because it gives a massive bonus to the whole template. Um, are we going to talk about all these stats over here? Mm, maybe. Maybe I will quickly uh, give a small explanation about all these stats over here. So organization is the morale. Uh, yeah, and when you lose the organization they will uh, fight less good. Uh, the recovery rate is uh, how quickly you gain organization to the maximum. Now reconnaissance we talked about, that's for later when we conquer territory and suppression. No, not no, reconnaissance is uh, uh, the boost it gets to uh, pick better tactics. Now we are not going to talk about tactics uh, in this episode because that is uh, what's going to happen when we are going to war. But you can increase your reconnaissance with a motorized recon, armor recon or cavalry recon. Uh, for your infantry units maybe just go with cavalry. And you can see that it goes to one. If I would add this one on, you get one reconnaissance. It's pretty good to have something because it picks better tactics and that means you will do more damage to the enemy. So uh, Then we have supply, weight, I'll talk about that, uh, reliability. The higher the least amount of units uh, of, of, of equipment you lose because it's going to break down. Um, let's not talk about these things. Soft attack is the damage you do to soft units. Hard attack is the damage you do to hard units. Now, what is soft and hard units? This is a fully soft unit. And you can see that over here. Uh, you can see that this unit is having 0% hardness. And that means it takes 100% soft attack. If an enemy is attacking a, this division, uh, and that division is 50% hard, for example, it has a, a couple of tanks in it and infantry, or tanks and motorized, then it's around 50%. Then, uh, and it's going to attack us with uh, 100 soft attack and we have 50% uh, uh, hardness, then we get half of damage. Their hard attack, if people are going to attack this, this division with a hard attack from a division, we don't get any damage at all because we are not hard. So it doesn't affect us. Apparently a cannon cannot pierce a body. That is how the, how the game thinks about this. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty ridiculous. So that is how that works. Uh, you have air attack. You could add a uh, support anti-air, for example. And that makes that the enemy airplanes that can give bonuses to the, to the attacks on the field will get penalized. Now, we are making our own planes. 
And we're trying to deal with that that way. So not from this division, but adding planes to the armies. We will show that in the next episode or in the episode after that one. Uh, then you have your defense. That is how many attacks a unit can attempt to avoid while on the defense, effectively allowing it to hold the line longer. Yeah, so uh, the more defense, the longer it takes for an enemy to break through. Now, what is breakthrough? That is your defense number when you are on the offense. For example, I am attacking with this unit against this unit. Then I will have a defense stat of 35, which is very, very low. Right? And they will have 200 or something. So it's going to be very difficult with my breakthrough stat to hold the attack over here because they will damage me as well with their soft attack. Now if they would attack me then this number counts at 228. But if I attack them then this is my defense number the 35. Now then we have armor and piercing. Um, I should open up a tank division for this. This is our tank division. Um, wait really? You can see the tanks have a huge breakthrough. They they are used for the attack. So when I attack with my tanks, I have more defense than I'm standing still. So you always want to attack with your tanks. Um, the average armor of this unit is 6.6. .6. And we are piercing the enemy armor with 8. If the enemy has a lower than 8 armor value, we will do full damage. If they have more armor, then there are some uh, some calculations you can do, and then you will do less damage. So if you have a huge amount of armor, and uh, the enemy has no piercing, they will get a huge penalty to their attacks. Now initiative uh, is about reinforcing. Uh, it also helps with the planning speed. You know this one, the plan preparation. Uh, the entrenchment, well, we already talked about this. This one is having an engineering company. That gives us extra entrenchment. Um, capture ratio is, I guess, capturing equipment, yes. And the combat width of this uh, unit is 12, which is pretty low. Combat width, um, uh, you can see that for each terrain, there is a combat width. For example, here in the forest, the combat width is 60. So... We could exactly fit in five tanks that can fight at the same time in a forest style. That is how you should uh, see this. Now attrition, weight, fuel capacity and fuel usage. That all explains itself in my opinion. Uh, tanks use more fuel, uh, especially when you use trucks and uh, armor divisions. You're going to use even more fuel and that is over here of course. So yeah, these are the stats that... Uh, you want to get. You want high breakthrough and soft attack on your light tanks, maybe medium tanks as well. Maybe you want a bit of hard attack, but most of the time you really want high soft attack and breakthrough because then you can do a lot of damage to the enemy infantry. And most of the time the AI in the single player is making a lot of infantry and not a lot of tanks in my opinion. So having high soft attack with high breakthrough and somewhat organization, at least 20, maybe if you can reach 30, that would be really nice. So you can last a little bit longer in your attacks. That is a really good panzer uh, division. And for your infantry, you also want hard uh, soft attack and a high defense stat. And high organization as well. Okay, I think I have talked enough, enough about our army. Uh, we will uh, get a better look at the army uh, when we are going to fight. Uh, that will happen later in this uh, tutorial when we will attack uh, Poland. And I think that will be it for this episode. In the next episode we are going to talk about our navy and how does the navy work in the game. Um, if you understand how the navy work, uh, works, uh, it makes the game so much more enjoyable. So hopefully I see you in the next episode where we will talk about our navy. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to uh, check the links in the description. Uh, like the video, maybe subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. And I see you in the next one. Bye bye.